Hi there, welcome. Welcome to Homekeepers. Hey, come right on in, my friend. Uh, maybe you've never seen us or been acquainted with us before, but I'm glad you're there. And I uh, want you to know that we're on regularly and hope that you'll be a part of this program uh, just as long as possible because we really do target some very, very important and interesting subjects and issues in life, just trying to make our homes more Christ-centered, more biblical-centered. And you know, when you get that pattern from the maker, it makes all the difference in the world. And that's what we'll be talking about today. Just a few days ago, I sat down with Fiona Arthurs, a beautiful young lady from Zimbabwe, uh, who married an American, and she wrote a book called Foolish Things That Wives Do to Mess Up Their Marriages. And it was so good. She was so good, we just kept talking. So actually, uh, she'll be on the next two programs following this one. And let me tell you about this. If you go to our Facebook page, and that information is coming up on your screen, uh, you'll, um, the first one will get a free copy of this book. And so uh, I hope you'll take advantage of this. I truly wish every married woman in the nation could read this because it's uh, very biblically based and maybe some things that ladies don't want to hear because we live in a culture kind of where women hate the men, you know what I'm saying? But when you get back to the Bible and his plan, it makes all the difference in the world. And I'm going to join Stephanie. We're going to make apricot bars. Uh, need I say more? I think they got some coconut in them and all kinds of good things. And before I join her, though, I was able to get some more of these books, Praying Circles Around Your Children, and we have sent out hundreds of these. I have a habit every morning before I come to work, I uh, read the Bible and pray. You know, they say if you want to really have a good day, you meet the Lord in the morning. And I pray for every single relative, all of my great-grandchildren, my grandchildren by name, because I think I'm still receiving the benefit of my grandmother praying for me. And so we want you to have this book and we send it to you for any amount, any amount at all that you're able to send. Um, it's called Praying Circles Around Your Children. And you send that donation to Home Keepers, Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, possibly the most important product we have ever, ever offered. Hope you'll take advantage of it. I'm glad we were able to get a few more. And I've joined Sister Steph over here. Hi there. How are you today? I'm good. How are you doing? Good. Good. I just want to reiterate that the, the book is a giveaway. You have to like make a comment and then we'll pick a name. It's not the first person oh, okay. that comes to the I'm, website. Oh, okay. On the, face, on the, on Facebook, the Facebook thing. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, to say I'm technically challenged would be an <laughs> understatement. So I and Brooke to make is sure laughing like her head off over there. <laughs> Because if you see any pictures on my Facebook, uh, sister, somebody's helped. No, <laughs> Brooke put them on there. I okay. keep telling myself I need to learn. Okay, what shall I do? Okay, you can spray the pan. I have a three quarter cups of butter and I have a cup of sugar mm -hmm. that I'm gonna um, uh, blend together. Cream. I'm gonna cream them together. This is softened butter too. Well. These are we, super. we could talk about this subject for a week, but I would say Stephanie is expanding her horizons. I am? She's a, she's a roofer. I'm a roofer. <laughs> oh, please don't make me cry. <laughs> and then I'm going to put an egg in here, and I'm going to put a half a teaspoon of vanilla. And if you want to, you can just take this baking um, soda or, yeah, let's see, baking powder. Yeah, that's a quarter teaspoon of baking powder, and you have two cups of flour. Put that in there and just uh, whisk it up a little bit, and mm -hmm. I'm just mixing these um, up. Yes, my husband and I are fixing a flat roof on our house. We've never done it before. Well, so we're Googling and YouTubing everything. And the marriage is still intact. Marriage is still intact. And if you so could have far, seen me so on far. Sunday evening at 6.30, I was covered in black flashing cement. Where are the Just pictures? Just covered. I, should have, I, was, I didn't take a picture because I was done. Like, I, it was 6.30. I said, you know, I have to be done right now. Mm -hmm. I, I can't do another thing. I'm tired. My body hurts. And I'm done. <laughs> So he's like, oh, okay, you you can go. <laughs> he got scared. Well, I'm just gonna put a little bit of the dry and then um, um, mix it in a little bit more. 
I think I... I think you put something on Facebook and I put it on there. Are you crying? You said no, I crying. Said no crying. I said too late. <laughs> it's but just you're you're really going to do a happy dance when it's finished and know what you say about five grand. Yeah, it's just really, really exhausting work. And if we knew what we were doing, it would it would just make life so much easier. But the end result, we always get to the correct end result. It's mm -hmm. just getting there. Okay. I'll give you all of it. Thank you. Well... Yep. I'm proud of you, and oh, I think I'm going to put it. Trust me. Somebody asked me, "Oh, is the roof done?" I said, "Trust me. You will we'll see know. the celebration. <laughs> I will dance on Facebook. I will. I'll, I'll post a dance uh -huh. that we're. Well, we want to see. Yeah. It. Oh, I'm sure. gonna. It's going to be the happy dance. I um, this we're making this in the month of March. I've been doing a happy dance for about 12 hours. I'm getting a refund on my is income tax. Is that amazing? <laughs> I haven't had a refund on income tax. I wonder why this year. I don't know, but don't upset You're it. You're not questioning it, right? No. Okay, so I have a coconut, a third, a cup and a third of coconut, and a half a cup of Are you through with this? Yes, please. And I'm going to just fold this in. You sprayed the 9 by 13 pan. Mm -hmm. I'm not even going to tell you to do it over the sink anymore. You what? I'm not even going to tell you to do it over the sink anymore. If you don't do it... <laughs> Some people can't learn. <laughs> Now, they, these really haven't been out of the oven quite long. No, they need to set, so. Mm -hmm. But you know we can blame it on somebody. Who are we blaming it on today? Herman Bailey. Okay. Let's His show went too long. Oh, well, okay, Herman Bailey, it's your fault. So. As long as we can blame somebody other than Stephanie, it's all we, good with me. We won't give him any. So I don't think these are going to turn out like bars, really. And yeah, once they would set up, they would. But yeah, they so would. Right now. Mm -hmm. So I'm taking two-thirds of this out. And I'm going to press it into the bottom of I'd this. I'd say this is a little bit more like a cobbler, but. Yeah, I think once it sets up, though, they'd come out as bars. Mm. So I'm going to press this in here. And then I'm going to take apricot preserves. It's good. Apricot preserves. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to spread it over. You're like eating, and I'm not even done yet. <laughs> like with a good hot cup of tea? Ooh. Oh, yeah. And take all your troubles away. Can you do me a favor and spray my fingers? Over here. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Practice what you I would have had to do it right there. <laughs> you got to hand it to her. That would have been it. She's consistent. Okay. So, I'm almost there. I was telling you how I was trying to get those Dave Ramsey books, and um, they would not take they won't your take credit, credit card. Yep. Well, they got to practice what okay. they preach. Okay. 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 We're very. Getting close to getting out okay. of time. So I'm I'm spreading the preserves and then I'm gonna take the rest of this and I'm just gonna crumble it over the top. Mm -hmm. And you then save bake it. Part of the base out of it, put it really, on. Really, really funny, really two seconds. My my husband's uncle Pete called me last night. He's like, <laughs> You had a recipe. I haven't heard from him in forever. <laughs> you had a recipe and I need and so for all the way from Tennessee. So which recipe? Uh, the the squash circles that we made. Oh yeah, yeah, we got a lot of requests for those. Yeah. Okay, I'm done. It and was funny. Because um, I never hear from them. I think that's wonderful, though. Yeah, it was funny. Yeah. So anytime you want, Uncle who? Pete. Uncle Pete, anytime you want a recipe, we'll get it right out Just to call you. me. And the rest of you. Give them a number. And then just make this and let them cool before you slice them up. But You can get uh, the recipe for free. Just... I want you to meet my guest, Fiona. She's beautiful and she's got a lot to say. If you would like a copy of today's recipe, just write the address on your screen, or you can email your request to artheline at rippy.org. Well, Fiona, I want to welcome you to Home Keepers. And um, thank you so much for having me. Yeah, and I want to find out uh, you've had an interesting life. Uh, you come from Zimbabwe, yes. and I was surprised to learn that it wasn't that long ago. I mean, you didn't come over here as an infant. Right. How old were you? I was 19, so about 21 years ago, I, I came to the U.S. I came engaged to my husband and uh, moved in with his parents for a year while I tried, you know, kind of learn the U.S. a little bit, be able to navigate, be able to get a driver's license, <laughs> you know, those basic things. So, and then a year later, we married. 
did you meet on the internet or anything like that? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, my husband actually uh, traveled to Zimbabwe um, to train under my father. Actually, our parents knew each other for quite some time. And then as he was training for ministry, his father sent him to my father to get, you know, hands-on training. And then uh, we met and kind of the rest is mm -hmm. history. And uh, your husband is a pastor. Yes. And your father. Yes, right. yes. So we come from a family of pastors and, you know, second generation uh, pastors. Uh, so. And I was fortunate to have your brother-in-law yes. as a pastor, too. So. Yes, yeah. Uh, yeah. So this is good. Now, you, you wrote this book, Foolish Things Wives Do to Mess Up Their Marriages. Yes. And I just wonder, was it experience or whatever was it that caused you to write on this subject? You know, it was both experience, my own foolishness I, I write in the book, and also just coming across women doing counseling and ministry and just watching, you know, people in relationships and seeing that, wow, as women, we do a bunch of foolish things that, if we're not careful, can really uh, destroy our marriages. So, again, it came from my own experience. You hear a lot about that in the book. And, again, just watching others. And I think culturally, you know, beating up on your husband, I think, is very big culturally here so you're fighting a lot of absolutely. different uh, absolutely. wars and that's that's definitely something that i want to fight against because it's just really sad what society has um, made women out to be to you know to, trying to make us women to be like men when we're not and mm -hmm. you know trying to say we shouldn't have to submit to our husbands or follow their leadership and things like that so i'm really hoping to bring a different message you can have a great marriage, you can be equals in the marriage, and one doesn't have to be, you know, usurp authority over the other, and you can have harmony in marriage. Well, that's, that is a message American is here, and Christian wives, uh, you also are a family therapist. Yes, I am. You are a licensed family therapist. Uh, do you have some instances in the book that maybe draw from your practice? Not so much. Not to name any names. Right. <laughs> right. Yeah. Not so much for my uh, from from my practice, but um, I guess I've had more experience since I wrote the book. Uh, but it's more from my own experience and being a pastor's wife, doing counseling along with my husband. Mm -hmm. And then I, I do, of course, I do see the same things repeated even in therapy. You know, I see mm -hmm. that time and time again. Well, you use the scripture, "A wise woman builds her house, yes, but a foolish woman tears it down." And you can't say it any more plainly than that. No, I didn't think so. That when I, you know, when I, I used to read the scripture, but one day it just became really alive to me. I said, "Wow, mm -hmm. I have a lot of influence. A wise woman builds." And I always kind of wondered, why didn't God say a wise man builds? You know, because mm -hmm. the man is supposed to be responsible for the house, but it says a wise woman builds, and so and and a foolish woman tears it down. No, it doesn't get any more simpler than that. Yeah, I've always thought the woman's the heart of the home. Yes, and. Um, in the morning, she can send her family out in victory right. or like that. Oh, absolutely. Because uh, she sets kind of the emotional tone. Absolutely. If women would just learn that right. in the morning, oh, yeah. send them out with joy and with blessing instead of that you had a bad night. Oh, yeah. I find when I am stressed out and I'm yelling and I'm bellowing instructions and I'm just <laughs> aggravated, <laughs> I find that my whole house is in chaos. So I have to take a time out, calm myself down, because I do affect how the children leave the house. You're absolutely correct. Mm -hmm. You know, when I'm dropping them off at school and I'm yelling at them, yeah. that's really going to affect them, you know, in the day. So I know that women does have a lot of power, a lot of influence. There's a couple of things, uh, I think ground rules, and I, I, that I would like to talk about. And number one is you said way up front, and I thought, this girl is on the ball. This is not for a wife who is being abused. Right. I've heard these spiritual stories, and I, I don't want to downgrade them at all, of, of women who stuck through, you know, being beaten and all, and the guy, you know, he finally got saved. Right. But um, I don't think overall that is really good advice. No, no, it really isn't, because you get can, help. Right, you hear too many stories of women dying mm -hmm. that could have left, you know, mm -hmm. and sometimes they advise even by mm -hmm. spiritual leaders to stay in this kind of situation. So I want to kind of put that up front that I'm not... Mm -hmm one of those leaders you know, who's saying just stay in there and, and take it. I don't believe in that. We see we lose too many women to domestic violence that they could have separated themselves from the situation, sought help, and then if things become healthy, they mm -hmm. can move back. But until it's a house of situation, 
that say you need to separate yourself. Yeah, and that's not just coming from a pastor's wife. She is a licensed family therapist, yeah, and so you've probably had to deal with that. Uh, the other thing is, because <laughs> women are so prone, yeah. I'll say we say, "Woman, you're supposed to respond this way." This, and mm -hmm. and then they'll say, "But he." does such and such. So yeah. this book is not for your husband. <laughs> <laughs> right. No, a lot it's of men for you. <laughs> and, and I would say when you read it, guard your thoughts that every little counteraction comes to your mind. It's right. not about him. Right. It's really not about him. So right. if we establish that, maybe. Yeah. Um, it's a hard lesson because we're so used to blaming others, you know, especially as women, this is like mm -hmm. my husband is not doing what he's supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm acting this way. That's why I can mm -hmm. yeah. move forward in the relationship. But yeah, so I told women, don't let your husband read it because they'll find out all our <laughs> secrets. But some, <laughs> some husbands are finding the book and reading it. And yeah. then some are even leaving a chapter open <laughs> for the wife. Yeah. So I said, this, this book is for women only. But like, yeah, and you know, if, if he does everything wrong, right. but you do everything right before the Lord, what have you lost? Yeah. I mean, you haven't lost anything. Right, absolutely, absolutely. And that's why it says, a wise woman builds. Mm -hmm. You know, says so up to the woman to build. Mm -hmm. And then whether or not he's doing what he's supposed to be doing, we are ultimately accountable because there's a wise mm -hmm. woman builds. So if you want to build your home, be that wise woman. And no matter how your husband is acting, you do your part. Okay, y now your translation, you have a translation for that scripture. Mm -hmm. A wise woman strengthens and helps to build her marriage, but a foolish woman messes up her marriage uh, using her own hands. Uh, and so you just kind of elaborated on it a little bit. Yeah, right. uh, do you keep a journal? Um, I used to, but not as often as I'd like to. Mm -hmm. Not as often as because I'd like didn't to. you draw some things from your own? Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And you know, actually, I went back through some of my journals. I haven't been as consistent. Uh, I think it's like, I don't know, when the kid's getting old, I don't know, but mm -hmm. when I went back and I saw some of the things that I was writing and say, you know, to God about my, <laughs> my husband, <laughs> I was quite ashamed because I was blaming him for everything that was wrong with, in our marriage. You know, you were cluing God in. I was. On, on the I mean, situation. I said, God fix him and I'll be okay and I'll do right. Uh, what kind of feedback have you gotten from this book? Do any of you, do any of them say, well, you know, you didn't address what he does, and so that's the reason we respond like we do? You know what, and I, I, I've, had, I've gotten a great response, and I do kind of share it in the, in the beginning of the book that really this has nothing to do with, with him. This is really your service unto the Lord. You're in the chapter that it's all about me. It's all, it's all on me. It's like, well, your part is all on you. You know, mm -hmm. his part is, 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 is on him, but you, as, as a husband, your part is all on you. So I've heard a lot of great response. Women, just marriage is saying, my life has been transformed. My marriage has been transformed. That's wonderful. And it's just been incredible. But I haven't heard anything negative. Of course, the title of the book kind of catches people's attention because like, okay, what are those foolish things that we are doing as women? And they read and they say, I've heard a lot of great testimonies. I've, one husband read the book and the wife says she's seeing the, uh, the, change. the, <laughs> the changes in her husband. I was like, okay, well, I guess it's helping everybody. I would say this book is totally biblical. You, you can't, uh, which is very strange in this culture. Right. This is off the wall stuff. Right. Yeah. It is biblical. Yeah. People don't want to hear it, but the, uh -huh. God, the word of God is clear. A wise woman builds. Um, okay. What if a husband has obvious faults? Mm -hmm. he, his leadership is lacking. He's lazy, lacks in initiative. I think I got this out of your book. <laughs> <laughs> not good with money, not a spiritual leader, and no help around the house. Uh, okay, we can find him a totally, total zero. Right. And in the real world, mm -hmm. in the real world, you're going to have to have an understanding of this book and of, of God's will and plan. Otherwise, right. if you're up against something like that, it's going to be it's, futile. It's hard. It's, it's a difficult journey really to, to walk, but uh, with God's grace, you're able to do it. One of the chapters that talk about too weak to fight, you've got to be, you've got to have an intimate relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. where you derive your strength because you can't walk this journey out on your own. Even if you have a good man, you still can't do it on your own now. Much, you know, even more when you have a husband who's like a zero, you know, as you described, mm -hmm. then you've got to really have that intimate relationship with the Lord where you can hear him and he can help guide you how to interact, him, how to interact with him, how to help him become the man of God that he's supposed to be. Well, I think a lot of our Christian ladies needed to hear that. 
Uh, I'm not sure it's preached as it should be. Uh, for, first of all, you, and I think you really touched on it without saying, you have a, a term in the book called knee time. Right. On your knees. Right. Yeah. Right. And, that, and that's critical. It's in, no matter what your relationship is, you've got to have that knee time, that, in, that uh, intimate relationship with the Lord, because it's, it's, again, the place where you get strength, where you can cry out to God about your husband. You say, okay, he's not doing what I want to do, you know, all these mm -hmm. things. You can mm -hmm. whine and complain. But then God mm -hmm. someone turns, it around, turns it on you and says, okay, what are you doing? Well, have you done your part? And God begins to work on, uh, you know, begins to work on you. In the same way, God worked in me when I was complaining about my husband to God. I'm like, God, fix him. God, he's not doing what he's supposed to be doing. And it's like, in that time that in his presence, God began to work in me. When I came out, I was, you know, I was a changed woman. I responded to him differently. I acted toward him differently. And, you know, things got better. In some areas, and we'll probably get into it, men are really pushovers. I mean. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. Oh, <laughs> they yes. might light up like a Chinese New Year with very little effort oh, on your part. It doesn't take much. If you mm -hmm. only realize men are simple, it doesn't, doesn't take much. They just need the honor, the respect, and, you know, that's half the battle. Yeah. Yeah, I think, uh, I just think that the culture is so against marriage. In every, and, of course, you're in the pastorate. You know that. Yes. Uh, that when you really get down to what God designed for you to do, for what your husband to do, he's, both roles are very clearly defined. Right. Um, yeah. It's not rocket science. You right. just do them and you'll be blessed. Absolutely. And one role is not, is not weaker than the other. Mm -hmm. You know, the equal roles, you just have to have roles in marriage. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. um, now, you have a new, uh, I don't know, slogan in here or something <laughs> called Watch the Tude. Oh, yeah. Have you ever heard that? I have never had. What's the Tude? <laughs> it's an attitude. It's attitude. I was watching one of those Disney shows with my kids, and I said, oh, this could be a good This is know. from the kids. Right. It's the kids, great. yeah, he says, Watch the Tude. Yeah. You know, sometimes they leave letters out of, you know, out mm -hmm. of a word. So, and it really has to do with your attitude in marriage. I found that this, I say attitude is everything in your marriage. If you have a bad attitude toward your husband, if you have this negative picture in your mind, you, you, I mean, you, you're going to see everything that's bad in him. So I said, attitude is everything. Once you get that fixed, the man that you've been seeing as zero, he's gonna, you're going to start seeing the one, and the two is going to start building. So yeah, attitude is everything. I think, I think it's great that you brought out that one word, because I, I think um, maybe most wives watching haven't even thought of the attitude, but it, it shows whether you're saying anything or not. Oh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. It's very, very evident. It is. And, you know, sometimes, and sometimes the husband is even clueless to, to, the, <laughs> to, the, bad, to the bad attitude. You know that, you know, you, you have a, really a negative attitude toward uh -huh. your husband. That's where can the Holy Spirit would convict and mm -hmm. say, okay, you need to watch this. Mm -hmm. You need to change it. But it's so important. I write about it in the book that, you know, it's easy for us to get this negative picture of our husbands and just focus on it mm -hmm. and see all the negatives. If you're looking for the negatives, boy, are you going to see them. Every single the way they sleep, the way they eat, the way that, you know, every little thing, you're going to see the negatives. So, but if you change your attitude, then I'm going to focus on the positives and you begin to see more and more of those. I hope a lot of ladies will just write that word and put it on the refrigerator, you know. Yes. I, I, I've just got to interject this. I read this. Um, I have four grandsons and one, just one granddaughter. Oh, and. Wow. No kidding, she's the most perfect person I know. She's <laughs> beautiful. She loves the Lord. She homeschools her children. Wow. But on her refrigerator, yeah. our little billboards that we have yeah. in our oh, yeah. kitchen, uh, it's like, show me how to be a better wife to my husband. Wow. And um, wow. I just wonder how many really good, fine Christian women that are in there working in the church and all right. uh, ever have given that a thought. Right. Lord, show me how to do the wife thing better. Yeah, it's usually, show, it's usually God show him how to be a better <laughs> husband. It's never God work in me so uh -huh. I can be a better wife. And in turn, you know, you might see, you know, better results. Yeah, yeah that's possible. We're, we're running out of time. But one more thing um, on this uh, <coughs> tood, mm -hmm. it shows up, it can show up in your facial expressions, oh, yes. in the tone of your voice mm -hmm. and all. And also you point out, this is very important, don't denigrate your husband right. to other women or, oh, to any, or your kids or anybody. Do not ever 
right. uh, you know, criticize him to anyone else. Right. It's, it is so dangerous. And you see more and more that in this culture today where, mm -hmm. again, women are being taught that men are not as important and your husband is not as important in your mm -hmm. life. And you know, we're talking to our girlfriends about our husbands. We're talking to our own parents, our children. It's just, it's just really sad to see that happening. And it's destroying. It destroys the people who hear these things. Mm -hmm. So usually what happens is the husband and wife get into a fight and you tell your girlfriend or you tell your parents mm -hmm. or your children, you know, you, you too can make up, but you know what? Yeah. Damage has been done. It has it, been. Yeah, and it's hard to look at, so, you know, at, at the husband at different. So it's very dangerous, and I would say cut it out. And the girlfriend will probably tell a girlfriend. Oh, and, yeah. And all, and just, oh, yeah. you know, uh, we're just about out of time. Can you hang around a little bit? We'll talk oh, some more. Absolutely. All right. Thank you. <laughs> uh, <coughs> she'll be on the next program, but um, in the meantime, you stay right where you are, because I have a couple things to say before we have to say goodbye. Arthelene would like you to keep the following information handy. You may contact Homekeepers by writing to Homekeepers, P.O. Box 6922, Clearwater, Florida, 33758, or go to www.rippy.org. Remember, we always enjoy hearing from our viewers, and we thank you for your support. We are, again, and we've offered this many times, uh, Praying Circles Around Your Children by Mark Batterson, who is a New York Times bestseller. And you just really ought to have this. Everybody ought to read it, really, uh, especially any, anyone, anyone who has children and grandchildren and you've got nieces and nephews. They can't get too much prayer in these very, very troubled times. Have you ever just tried to think about the messages your children are getting. They're a lot different than the ones when you were growing up, my friend. And everything is right out there. And of course, technology just uh, builds it up hundreds of percentage points. And so prayer is the most powerful thing you can have when you're thinking about your children. I would never let a day go by without praying for my children and my grandchildren. Because, you know why? The Bible says, I know whom I have believed. And I'm persuaded that he's able to keep what I've committed to him. And I have committed my family to him and I can trust him. But my part is to pray. And I can do that. And so can you. And I hope you'll join me next time because there's no higher calling than that of a homekeeper. God bless you. If you should miss a homekeeper's program, you can catch up by going to www.ctnonline.com. Click on CTN Programs and then on Homekeepers.